KCRT and K291CN Kansas City. Gospel 1590, 106.1 FM. It's 9 o'clock a.m. Welcome to the Morning Glory Show. Turn your volume up and let the word of God pierce your soul. 1590 a.m. on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM, pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. deliver in 2021 to come out on the other side in 2022 to be a champion amen so in order for me to help the body of christ and especially those in the greater kansas city area on the 15th which is next saturday and i have really done this i am i am will be doing a training for deliverance workers okay those of you that are in churches and you're um i'm talking to leaders as well um, this is anointed as upon my life that Bishop is just blessed to have at GBFIC. And so those of you that know that I do deliverance meet and it's been doing it from years to the greater Kansas City area, people travel from other places, but I am wanting to train up deliverance workers so you can have that in your church. Okay. So go ahead and contact the church at 816-795-1900 or inbox me on Facebook or DM me on Instagram. But this is for those of you that are under divine alignment in your churches. So if your pastor can't come or first lady or bishop apostle, tell them you're wanting to come. It'll be at 10 a.m., okay, 10 a.m. on that Saturday. And so I am going to just be able to train you up so that you would know how to function and flow in the area of deliverance. Um, so you can understand sometimes when you see some manifestations or even knowing how to properly pray for individuals and lead people through cleansing prayers. Okay. So once again, 816-795-1900. Um, Evangelist Park, I know you there. If you can do me a post later on on your Facebook, I have in I have a pastor that is bringing. And the reason why I'm opening this up because I have a pastor that is bringing in his people from out of state for me to be able to train. So therefore, I'm just going to open it up so other individuals in the greater Kansas City area can come in as well. Pastor McDaniel, how are you doing this morning? I am doing amazing, Prophetess. Thank you so much for inviting me. Amen. Oh, and let's let me not forget. Um, let me not forget. For Friday, we have the Friday flow, which is going to be the daughters of the house. So we have three dynamic preachers, teachers from GBFIC. And so come out. That's the Friday night flow. We just have a fabulous time. So you get a chance to come out. Amen. Uh, Amen. For that. And someone will have to tell me because y'all know I, I, you, I, I butcher up these announcements. So uh, I'm quite sure a bishop or somebody would give me a text. So, Pastor McDaniel, this is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I wanted to deal with, you have been dealing with for some time in the area of dealing with trauma. And so go ahead and just uh, open up and tell the individuals um, in reference to, you know, how did you get involved in this and the importance, we know, we the importance of this for the church. And then perhaps, I don't know if there's some trainings out there. Um, I know we're going to do something at GBFIC because... We have a ministry of compassion. If you don't know, I'm telling you right now <laughs> that I want you to be a part of, to be able to bring in some, um, some training and some things of that nature. So our first ministry of compassion group that I'm support group that we're going to be doing in the month of June will be dealing in the area of loss and grief. Amen. So you go ahead and take it away. 
All right. Well, thank you, Prophetess, for inviting me to be a part of your radio broadcast. And good morning, Bishop. I just want to, you know, got to acknowledge the man of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we never want to leave. And good morning to my GBI, uh, GBI. Look, I can't even say it right. Amen. Glory Bible fellowship and good morning to Debbie D. I know she's out there. Um, but yes, I've been in the area of dealing with the area of Bible based trauma healing. I got started back in 2017, um, 2017 after my church closed in 2016. And I just asked the Lord, Lord, what do you have next for me? And so the Lord knew I had a gift of mercy. He's given me the gift of mercy and gift of compassion. And so I actually just received the email. I didn't know what it was for, what it was about, but I had enough faith to walk out there and said, okay, let me go check this out, right? Even though I knew I had to leave town, amen, to go to Dallas to get the training. Hey, look, sister had no money. <laughs> it was summertime. <laughs> Our children had no income. And I said, you know what? And, and I said, if the Lord wants me to do this, he's going to make a way. And so he did. And they just covered all my expenses for to go out there for five days and and then the uh then two months later uh sent me to philadelphia for advanced training and covered all the expenses so i knew this was an area where god was calling me to and let me tell you about uh, trauma how we define trauma um uh, actually we are actually um I'm with the sending project which is in kansas city and they have partnered with the american bible society you know, those that translate the Bible in all those different languages. <laughs> that yes, we yes, yes. And so, and so this is who we partner with. And they've actually put together this curriculum called Bible-Based Trauma Healing. And it says, uh, their book actually is called Healing the Wounds of Trauma, How the Church Can Help. Amen. Somebody Amen. Should that for it. It's how the church can help, not the world, not the politicians. No, this is how the church can help. It should begin it should begin with us. We have all the wisdom in, in the word of God that will help people to heal. But we need to get the training and we need to get the knowledge and the wisdom and be willing to do something different outside, even though it may not look like uh, something you've ever done before. Some of us won't stray from that program. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. It's something because we uh, actually, uh, we use the word of God to get people healed. Okay. We don't do the healing. We let the word do it and we let God and his spirit do it but what is trauma what do we consider as trauma trauma we labor is a is, is a deep wound of the heart and mind that takes a long time to heal people don't understand that it hurts every part of our lives how we relate to others how our body feels and what we think about and how much we can trust god it can make us feel separated from god and others and we may no longer feel like the same person as before and how Amen. many people do you know it's like they don't they no longer feel like the same person as before because when you have trauma it doesn't leave you the same even when you go through the healing group that we offer it it does it's, it's still you will have some things that will come back you know some triggers but yeah. as you're walking through a process of healing your emotions behind the incident will change how you respond will change because you have the word of God to fall back on, right? Amen. So, so what do we do in Bible-based trauma healing? We take the wisdom of the Bible and balance it with the best mental health practice. This is what makes us different, different. So we incorporate both. And so what we do is we create a safe place for people to share their pain. I, you know what? I like that. You say a safe place. To share your pain because many Christians think that's because you come down to the altar or you getting up and and I just cringe when I see people tell private information right. as a testimonial or at the front of the church with, with everyone and so the key component is that you say a safe place you know and we have to do more of that and teach more of that within the churches amen Absolutely. and if you have any questions over here on Facebook if you put them out there I will get those questions answered over here um given to um pastor mcdaniel go ahead exactly and so when since we're talking about the bible and how we share and how we uh, engage people in the word of god the one that comes to me is psalms 34 and 18 and i'll actually be reading it from the good news translation which every this, this curriculum is created uh they use actually the, the good news translation and it says um in uh, verse uh, th uh 34 and 18 it says the 
The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. And if you know anybody that's in trauma, they are discouraged. They have yes. lost hope. And so what trauma does, it, it affects the heart. And people become numb because of the pain. And so they shut down so nothing can get in, not in not the word of God, and not uh, 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 counseling, right? Because we tell people to go to counseling, but people have to understand that there's a numbness that's happened. I have experienced this numbness before because, and I actually have gone to a counselor and they said, the pain is so great, it is easier for you to shut down yes. because you don't want to experience it. And how many people you know are sitting in our churches, sitting in our homes, they have shut down and you notice their behavior. If you ask them a question, they, and they always say, I'm fine, I'm fine. But you know, there's some things that have happened to them, have happened to yes. them. And you yes. have not shared anything. They haven't shared it because they're, they, they haven't found that safe space. They haven't found the safe space or they're, they haven't had anybody to listen to them. One of the things that the areas that we talk about in, in trauma healing is, is a listening, how important listening is. You know, so so not listening to respond, but listening, truly hearing the person and how they're sharing their pain uh, and what they're sharing. And because there's things in that they may rant on and on and on, right? Because they yes. have not found the words uh, to really express how they feel. So they may rant on and you need to listen to what they're trying to, what they're in those little nuggets that they will share something that will help you get to the root. And prophetess, I know you all about getting to the root. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes because i want to see those fruits i want to see you walking your destiny where god has you Amen. and we have the understanding to buy your christ um, i hope it's not my phone giving feedback the buy your christ that the, the enemy that john 10 10 is so for real mm -hmm. satan comes to what steal kill yeah. and destroy and whatever destroy. it is that he has to do and you know i deal more in the area of helping adult survivors out of childhood sexual abuse but I want to be more preventive. This is so, um, like even the ACE, uh, I usually pass out the ACE um, assessment, you know, mm -hmm. that is really a good assessment to look at. So you can see just based off of that 10 questionnaire, you can go out there and Google it, amen. Mm -hmm. it, it notifies people who are going to be set up for even health disparities as well as mental issues from a point of a child. So we can be more preventive if the church, you know, and, and this is so when you say that the church can come in, because if you think about a child, and if a person go through trauma as a child, they're going to go to a school, a hospital, or a church at some point. Yeah. And if the church will be the, can be the place where they can catch this here and recognize, like you said, um, you can see someone, in a, you know, look at them and they tell you, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Come on now. Um, I know, just confess that. But I can see deep, and we and listen. Now, and here's the thing: because we are spiritual, and so mm -hmm. we get discerned. There's some of us have discernment, and mm -hmm. so what do? Here's a question that I have: How what can be done in those situations that way where you you can see somebody walking in this numbness? Mm -hmm. What can the church put in place to help individuals like this? Some you know. Um, or what happens? I want to help some other churches. All churches don't have what GBFIC have. They don't have a pastor McDaniel. They don't have a prophetess and a bishop and, and a doctor right in all these components of people that walk in all these areas are helping you get set free from your broken heartedness. Yes. Um, number one, people will not um, uh, share anything with you. They don't feel like they can trust you. Um, Amen. Y'all yeah, hear that? that trust by your Christ. <laughs> Can't be messy. Trust, trust, because they don't want to hear a, a sermon from the pulpit. <laughs> you know how they say, are they talking about me? Are they talking about me? So they don't, they're afraid that you're going to use their pain. You may not use their name, but they're going to know that you're talking about them. And, and they want to be able to trust because they want to know how much you care. Uh, you actually care about them enough that they can privately go to you and share what they've been going through. And then you tell yes. them, we're walking you through and there, there's a process, even in Bible-based trauma healing. I am not a counselor. Those that are facilitators, uh, not all of them are counselors. You know, some of them are in the mental health field. They have been certified to do this. But we know if someone is beyond what we are sharing with them or teaching, we are to refer them out. 
listen, we, we ain't so so holy that we trying to hold on to you. <laughs> and be Amen. Exorcism, and, right? And you, <laughs> you bring up a good point because you can speak more just most church individuals put their pastors in the position of a counselor when they are not. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's something that we have to um we have to be more aware of even as leaders is to know your li- is to know your limitations. Okay. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Uh, you know, Bishop said all the time he'll tell individuals, especially with dealing with things with women or what have you, that that's just not he doesn't, you know, he referred that stuff over to me. So <laughs> if you're although although you are a pastor and we do I there's a difference. There's I have pastoral counseling. And then mm-hmm. I provide biblical counseling for those trauma issues. I still call it biblical counseling because yeah. I'm letting you know that if you come to me, I'm using the word. Now, because Amen. of my background and have a master of social work, you're going to get some of that third proof that come out there. But what mm-hmm. I have found is that this Bible, this Bible, I'm sure faith, basic instruction before leaving earth is going to help you with your broken heart and all of that. So I cannot stress um, how important it is le- leaders that to have someone to come in to get this set up in, a, in in your church or to open it up so that we even before Pastor McDaniel came to our church we had her to come in and and our you did it during our empowerment class and yeah. it was just the, the the and the people just was so phenomenal now our people been going through deliverance meetings for years but they were still able to recognize. And take and uh, understand and go through that teaching, amen. Amen, amen. And they did. And and how this is set up, proper this is what we call healing groups. And healing groups are anywhere from um, three to twelve people. Where we bring them in the safe space, and we go through uh, the sessions with them, the the lessons that that we actually go over. We have six core lessons in order for it to be a healing group, and those six core lessons is. Uh, if God loves us, why do we suffer? What is a wound of the heart? What can help your heart wounds heal? What happens when someone is grieving? Bringing our pain to the cross. Mm-hmm. How can we forgive others? Those are our core lessons. But we also have others, which the one I did in your church was like, uh, um, how to live as Christians in the midst of conflict. That's the one. And say, the, the, say that again. Say that again. How to live as Christians in the midst of conflict. Now, the, you can't uh, tell me all of us need that. Now, amen. That's a standalone. You don't have to have a healing group for that. We can just come in and do, because we have standalone lessons that, that, that we talk about uh, rape. There are things about, you know, uh, uh, children. There's. Uh, Where's the uh, one I want you to do that you told me about that's going to be coming out? Oh, gener- uh, generational trauma, the black and white experience. Ooh, you, you, uh, we, we, you know, because I mean, all about generational mm-hmm. breaking and destroying generational curses, gener- bringing in generational blessings. So, mm-hmm. um, Dr., what I'm calling, I don't upgrade you. I'm like, Dr. Thank McDaniel, you. you must get ready to go back to school. <laughs> um, tell us, so how can we get in contact, you know, with your organization or even you to come yeah. in? Give yeah. them the information. How can they reach you? I want to make sure we get that out there. Oh, they, they can call me at 816-868-2064. And that is my cell phone number. Or oh, they can uh, email me at Donna McDaniel 2064 at gmail.com. And I am uh, mostly doing my uh, facilitations with uh, Mark Davis. He is actually the director for trauma healing with the sending project. So he sets all of this up, all the trainings, all the, um, uh, we don't call them training, all the sessions. And we do convening sessions, which if you have a, a church group that wants to know more information, we're bringing you together for a shorter verse, like maybe three hours. And we give you a taste of what trauma healing looks like, what this program is about. And so we'll walk you through a lesson, you know, part Amen. Of lesson and we'll share the information with you. But, you know, best you remember, like I said, in, in the word of God, you know, Psalms 147.3 said he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Woo! He heals the 
bathroom and bandages the get room. That, the get room. That. So we, we did um, Psalms 34, 18, and the one you just did right now. That's Psalms 147 and 3. Psalms 147 and 3. Facebook is saying that they're loving this. They're enjoying this. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning, Be uh, Beverly Campbell. That's my dear friend all the way from Denver, Colorado. Hi, Amen. Hi. You guys get out here and share this. So yeah. let's go through. So go back through those 10, those other categories. Read that out again so people can hear what they can get okay. taken care of in their churches. Okay. You're talking about not the core lessons. Are you talking about the core lessons? The core lessons, yes. Those the, the core, core lessons. lessons. Or to, in order for it to be a healing group, classify as a healing group, you have to go through the six core lessons, which is if God loves us, why do we suffer? You know, that's a demon because you'll be surprised. I mean, the body of Christ don't realize why we suffer. And yes. it's in the Bible. Genesis tells us why we suffer, right? Go ahead. Get, <laughs> go get back to the beginning. Like, get them that scripture for that second. Do they homework? <laughs> go school. back to, uh, to, uh, to the beginning. Um, when Adam, you know, Adam, Adam was created in the Garden of Eden when they, when they were disobedient, right? Satan came in, you know, and, and, and also, uh, and he has given us free will. Yes. This is why we suffer. This is why the choices we make, my mentor said, every choice we make, makes you. Say so that. Ooh, y'all, y'all every, every choice you make, makes you. And you don't understand the choices we, we make, whether it be, a uh, uh, it can harm us, but not only us, it can harm our family, even for generations. The well, and, we and see, this is the, and, and, and this is where I, I'm in the face of the father, because I look at our young generation and I was having, you know, how many of us turn away from the word or even turn away from wise counsel. And, you know, the most, I think the most dumb, I'm going to say this dumb and stupid statement that I hear is that, oh, we want to make our own mistakes. Really? Y'all can make me emoji for that. Look at my, if you look at my face. Come on, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, and I, and I look at myself, my, my mother dealt with drug addiction. Why would I want to try that and make, and say, let me try this and see if it's going to work out. Right. Which tells right. you already, because you stated something about the generational right. things that's in there. Because if I would have opened up the door to drug right. addiction, it would have been that much stronger Right. to come down on my next generation. Right. Okay. Right. And so you said, and you also stated something about one of the very key components when I'm dealing with individuals and dealing, especially in the area of sexual, being sexual abused is getting over that very thing you just said. How come God did not help me? Right. And right. the, the, and the issue is because about the free will and what the responsibility in those cases is what God has for parents and right. that we live in a, a fallen a world, a broken world, a fallen world where mm -hmm. there is evilness and wickedness That's in right. this world. Amen. And even all the trauma that comes after uh, at us or the heartache and the pain. And that's why I like, this the trauma-based teaching that you have because it has a foundation with the word of god amen, amen. that because that's the only way i know how to deal with anything mm -hmm. and even though i believe in counseling and all of that it mm -hmm. is still mm 